These are the tables for the studio jelly space. And I made six tables and 12 benches. And the idea for them was that they would be modular and that it would be easy to make them into different configurations. So in some instances, they'd be separate tables with a bench on each side. And then in some instances, tables put together to make a bigger table with benches running around. And even maybe a setup where they're like bleachers in that people sit on the tables with their feet on the benches and with a bench on the table 66, if there was going to be some sort of performance in the space. This was getting the wood for the tops, which is reclaimed bleacher seats from Griswold Stadium at Lewis and Clark College. And they're fir and hemlock. Now in doing the tables and wanting to make them modular, I wanted to make the leg flush with the top so that there wasn't any overhang of the top like you'd see with, with most tables. So that the volume of the table and the benches would almost be a rectilinear solid without anything sort of sticking out like a tabletop plane. So I brought all of the pieces in. And the first thing to do was to find all the metal that was in them. Luckily, they had been cut, I think, at the supports on the bleachers. So the metal I did find was at the ends. And it was mostly threaded bolts that must have connected these to the metal frame of the bleachers. I could either unscrew the bolts or if that was too difficult, I could just cut them off. So it made it pretty easy to get the metal out. And it made it easy to square up the ends and sort of clean up the, the pieces. So I started by planing them, and I thought I could just plane the paint off. And this worked for a little bit, but then the planer was definitely getting dull. It was definitely working a lot harder to, to plane the pieces of wood. So I hadn't sharpened it in a while, so I decided it was time to to sharpen it. And with this planer, and with most bigger planers like this, they came with a little grinder that rides along on a bar above the cutter head. And you can grind the blades in place without having to pull them out and then reset them once they've been sharpened. So you can sharpen them in place. And this is the Paramatic Quiet Head, which they made for about two years back in the 70s. And it was just a really bad idea because it's got all these little short blades in the cutter head that are really hard to reset if you pull them out to sharpen them. So it's, so it's much nicer to sharpen them in place. So I continued planing, but I found that paint was just really dulling the blades quickly. Like it only took another half a dozen boards or so and it was dull again. So I decided I would try removing the paint on the joiner as the joiner has carbide tip blades in it. And I hope that would work a lot better. And in thinking through this a little more, I decided I would try and remove as much of the paint as I could with the length of the boards, Cut it, cutting the boards to much closer to the length that I needed so that I wouldn't have to remove as much paint. And this gave me a lot of little scrap pieces to deal with. And the joiner cutter head seemed to take the paint well. I was able to do all the boards and get all the paint off. And I had never actually rotated the blades on this cutter head since I've had it. So I figured this was a good time to do that, as it was getting a little bit duller. And once I'd done that, it was much, much nicer. So I did that after I made sure all the paint was removed. I jointed the side with the least amount of paint. Then I cut off the other side on the table saw. And once I'd done that, I had pretty much all the paint removed. So first it was removing metal, and then it was removing paint. Where I got the wood, they said there was no lead in the paint. But just to be sure, I also ran a test and that came up negative for lead. But I still wore my respirator. And once I did that and had the planer sharpened again, I could plane everything to the same thickness and get things ready to, to start to actually put together. There was lots of repetition on this project. This is about the second or third time going through the planer. And I did a final pass in the joiner to give a nice smooth surface. And I ripped them all to a final width. I find with woodworking, you're sort of carving things down and sort of getting closer and closer to that final shape. You don't really cut things all at once to the final size. So with the tabletops, I used biscuits to join the pieces of wood on the top together. I was lucky in the tops, I could use three pieces of wood and it, it was just just about the right size for the tabletops. I find I like to dry fit 
biscuits every time before I actually get the glue out just to make sure everything fits together. And I found because I had three boards, I could glue one joint first to get two boards put together. And then as that was clamped, I could put the glue on the third joint and then quickly unclamp and then clamp the third board in place to get all three together. So that I wasn't dealing with two, two joints and four surfaces all at the same time. And this seemed to work pretty well. Now on the first tabletop, I managed to glue it down to my work surface. So on the, the ones after this, I had a little stick underneath to hold it up off the table. Now for the benches, I wasn't quite so lucky, but I think in a way it was a good thing that I one board wasn't wide enough and two was way too wide. So instead of just sticking a one or two inch piece on the side of each one, I, I, I sort of would find a good spot within the main board to cut it into two pieces and then sneak a thin strip or, or a stripe sort of into the bench top. And even trying to find a piece that was a different color and a different tone so it would almost celebrate the, the new piece instead of trying to match the pieces because none of these boards matched each other. So it was sort of easier to, to sort of celebrate that instead of try and hide it. You know, the benches, I think on some of them I used biscuits and some of them I didn't. And I think with the, the narrower bench, it really don't need the biscuits. I think I can, you know, it's sort of a long enough joint with a short enough span that it's really not that necessary. I find I seem to be using glue at an exponential rate over the years. It, I used to buy a little bottle every once in a while and, and now I buy gallon jugs of it and refill my glue bottle. At this point, I wanted to cut the benches and tables to all the same length, so I had to do some cross-cutting. So I changed the blade and the table saw. And because they're so big, I wanted to use my big sled, which is really set up for the bigger saw. So this saw blade is probably more of a combination blade, but I just had it sharpened and it, it cross-cuts really nicely. And it'll go through the thicker material nicely, too. I brought all the tops over. And I cut one side on each one to square up one side of each bench and each tabletop. Then I had to make a stop for the sled because the sled wasn't quite long enough for the length I needed for the tops. So I made a little piece that sticks out from the end of the sled to act as a stop so that all of the tops could be the same length. This is one of the nice things about making your own sleds is that if there's some function you need, you just kind of add on whatever you need. You just sort of attach it and it works. So once I did this, I could cut them all to the same length. Then I put the ripping, ripping blade back in and ripped everything to a final width. The benches were narrow enough that I could face joint the tops on the joiner get a nice surface. Now that the main body of the tops were done, I could do the trim piece or the, the frame as I was calling it that would wrap around that, that center piece. So I cut out many, many, many sticks to make those frames. Some of them needed to be jointed, but for the most part they were pretty straight. And I ripped them all to one inch width. And that went, that went pretty well and quickly. And then I cut a miter on each end, and I attached a stop to the end of the table so I could make the lengths all the same. And for the short side pieces, I put a little mark on the sled that I could line the piece up with. When the miter is facing down, it's really hard to make a stop that'll, that that piece will accurately stop to. I find it's better to use a little mark. Then it was just a matter of attaching pieces, so I used glue and some nails. I did the two ends first, because they're small and sort of easy to get lined up. And then the two ends would help line up the longer piece, and I put that in place. And this method seemed to work pretty well. I had to make sure the tops and the bottoms were flush, so that they would take the legs. Off. Now at the tables, it was basically the same, the sides were just wider. Now the legs I got at the same place, and there, the dunnage wood for steel when it's shipped in to the port here. When steel is shipped here, it, it has to sit on something, so they, 
So they cut up this beautiful tropical hardwood to put it on because they need something dense enough that won't crush under the weight of the steel. So it's really nice to be able to reuse this. And it comes in a form that's almost the shape that I need for the legs. So I jointed two faces and got the piece square and flat. And then I could plane the other two faces and get it square. Square is in the shape square, not square as in 90 degrees square, but that too. Now for cutting the legs to length, it took a little while to get the process right. I tried it with my big sled, and that was accurate, but it seemed a little dangerous with the end hanging off next to the spinning blade. Then I used my regular sled, which was super accurate, but because the bottom's a little thicker, I couldn't quite cut the piece of wood in one pass. So then I made a big fence for my miter gauge, and this I was easily able to cut the piece of wood all the way through, but I could not get a square cut on the end. The, the blade was square, but I just couldn't keep the fence square. So I broke down and just bought a 14 inch cross cutting blade. And I, th this saw I'd always figured was sort of my ripping cable saw, but for, for this I needed so much height and it cuts so nicely. And this let me use my good sled and keep it nice and safe and nice and square and with a nice blade on there it gave me this just perfect almost polished perfectly square cut made it very very nice now once i had the legs started i needed to cut off the little bit where the the frame on the top would fit into the leg so i needed to cut a tenon the legs are thicker than this tenoning jig's really meant for, so I had to basically take the clamp off and put my own clamps on, hold it in place, but it worked. And then I cut the sides off on the radio arm saw. Then you, you can see how those are gonna fit into the tops. So I sort of did them quickly, sort of set up, and then on a few of them I had to go back and carefully Fit, fit them into place. That, but once I had each joint fit, I could then cut the legs to the final length. Now half of the way I was going to attach this was to have a metal L bracket on the inside of the leg, attaching it to the top. So what I wanted to do was cut a little 45 degree notch out of the top of the leg to for a place for that L bracket to attach to the leg. So I, I, I cut most of that on the table saw and then had to clean it up by hand. And then the other attachment I was going to do was to have two screws coming down through the top on the outside of the legs. So this would give me sort of three metal attachment points. This joint is so small, there sort of isn't enough surface to, to just do a, a traditional wood joint with glue. I really felt like I needed some steel in here. So I, so I would attach the L brackets with the legs clamped to the top and then I could roll the bench over and then put the screws in through the top into the, into the leg. And I feel for, for as thin as the joint is, it feels sturdy. And there's a little time lapse of this whole process. And we've, we've had a streak of really nice weather, sort of sunny and 70 degrees every day. So I was actually able to do the sanding and the finishing outside, which actually really helped. I really didn't have room for all of these and the sawdust. And trying to keep the, the sawdust down and then finishing in the same space is going to be difficult. So I sanded and cleaned them up with mineral spirits. And then I used a fast drawing oil-based polyurethane as a finish. We needed something that... that Looked good, didn't look too thick or too shiny, but could, but could still take juice being spilled on it and not stain it. Now for the tables, I went a little further with the corner joint and instead of making a little notch I just cut off the entire corner of the leg which I think in the end looked a lot cleaner and a lot nicer and it let me joint that surface and the second change I made I, was that I made a little space for the leg of the L bracket to fit into the leg and I think this this makes the bracket flush with the leg and I think it looks a little cleaner so I had to carve out the little wedge shape left by the dado blade. But one, once I got the hang of this, it went pretty fast. And you can see how the bracket fits in there. The other thing I did a little bit differently is I made a little jig and I clamped a piece of wood to the leg to kind of make a false top. And I could then attach 
the bracket with the leg lying down, which is a lot easier. And I could keep it sort of clamped in place and make it very accurate. Once the brackets were in place, I could put the legs in place and you sort of see how that fits now. And then this made it easy because I could just put this, the two screws in for the bracket and be done. It was the same thing with the benches where I could then roll the table over and it was a little trickier with the table, but it worked. And then put the screws into the legs from the top. And the tables were a bit heavier and a little bit more awkward than the benches. So this is a little time lapse of putting the legs on the tables. And then I sanded outside, cleaned up with mineral spirits, put the finish on. And with the benches and the tables, after the first coat of finish, I sanded with 320 grit sandpaper and then put a second coat on. And that actually really helped. Then it was time to start taking everything down to the studio. And no, I didn't sleep in the shop overnight. <laughs> It was fun trying to pack the, the back of the truck, trying to fit the shapes of the tables and benches into the shape of the bed of the truck with the wheel wells. The, the legs on the tables are all different colors and all different shades of, of color, but the, the floor is that way too. So the, the legs kind of go with the floor and I like how the legs almost disappear a little bit and so that the tops of the benches and the tables sort of float above the floor. So you can see some different configurations, kind of where the, the tables are separate with then sort of two together and then the tables all kind of in a line and then the tables in groups and then the tables and benches kind of in a bleacher sort of set up if there was going to be some kind of performance. So that was the end of the Studio Jelly woodworking project. Thanks for watching.